Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 78, Ontology. Now, Ontology is part of our Three Wise Monkeys series that explores epistemology, ontology and, yes, methodology. And there's no doubt that ontology is probably the most complex of our three wise monkeys. It is very difficult to generalize beyond a very specific slice of philosophy that we know of as metaphysics. But we're going to have a very good go today. I'm going to give you a series of definitions, some quick and dirty definitions, so that you can use ontology not only in your research more generally, but you understand its role and its place specifically in doctoral education. So what ontology does does is it helps you think through the objects that exist in your research and how those objects are categorized and helps us to build the relationships between those objects. So basically if Yoda was a philosopher rather than a Jedi Knight he would be studying ontology and indeed the force is a great model and method and trope to think about ontology. So whenever you get a bit lost, think about the way in which the Force was defined in the first of the Star Wars films. The notion that every object in the universe has a relationship. Well, ironically, that sort of helps you hold on to some sense of ontology. But it is tough, it is difficult, it is intricate, so let's have a good go today and I hope you are ready. So the easy definition of ontology, if you want to write it on a post-it note and stick it on your computer, is the theory of objects and their relationships. Right. So onto from the Greek means being or that which is. So we are studying beings. We're studying that which exists that which is. So ontology provides us with a criteria or a rubric, if you will, to distinguish between concrete and abstract objects, the real and the ideal. It also allows us to think about the links that tether particular objects the relationships and sometimes the hierarchies between those objects. Ontology is meshed into metaphysics. Meta, of course, from the Greek meaning higher. So it is the big, if you like, the mega categorization of objects in the world. Ontology is part of metaphysics, meta meaning higher. So it's the theoretical domain that provides us with a description or an inventory, if you will, of the objects that exist within domains of knowledge. I'll say that again, the objects that exist within the domains of knowledge. Now that last little bit is quite significant. So your domains of knowledge or your theories may not necessarily be true. So it's objects that exist, but it doesn't have to exist in an object or a theory that's actually correct or real or true. It doesn't make judgments about that. So the entities that exist within our theory, that is ontology. So depending on your epistemology, your theory of knowledge, your ontology, that is your objects in your research and the relationships between them will differ. Okay, let's give you an example. Uh, let's give you an example. Let's think about the word card. Card. Now in the domain of poker, card refers to a playing card. That's the object. In the domain of computing, a card could refer to a video card. Cool, a sound card. In the domain of football, to be carded signals a warning, either a yellow card or a red card, that you are to leave the game. So you can see there, depending on the domain of knowledge, whether it be computing or poker or indeed football, the card, the object, exists differently. Okay, cool? Rockin'. So ontology helps us identify the objects 
that exist within our theory and also how they are categorized. So we've got all of that, that's great. So why would we be doing this? Why does ontology actually matter to researchers? Well, it helps us reflect on our assumptions and asks us that we probe the foundations of the way in which we make our judgments. So the big questions on this planet, the big questions in history, have been ontological questions. So what properties govern the nature of matter? Does God exist? Is Toblerone a chocolate or actually a Trojan horse for an alien invasion? I've always been worried about Toblerone, always a bit dodgy, I thought. So ontology is not about what is true. So, for example, science and religions have different ontologies. They have different theories about the world. So Darwin's natural selection was a rupture in the ontology of traditional 19th century Christianity. Boom transformed it. And indeed, really, climate change, I suppose, is the modern rendering of these types of ontological debates. So has human behaviour had a role in global warming? Well, I think we're at 97% of scientists believe that it has, but there is that magical 3% that perhaps you wouldn't trust to do your own laundry or indeed manage your refrigerator, but there is a 3% that believe that humanity, human beings, have no role in climate change, and that is their ontology. And again, none of this is about being true, none of this is about actually being real. So let's ask a really seemingly straightforward question, is the world round? Well, if you're a member of the Flat Earth Society, you would very much disagree with that question, is the world round? They argue that the world is flat. And indeed, it is a relatively <laughs> large international, which does make me laugh, international organisation, the Flat Earth Society, based in London, and they describe themselves as free thinkers, which I particularly enjoy, and they have their own website, and of course they have their own Facebook group. So that's their ontology. So if you ever go, oh right, well is an ontology true? Look, no, just remember the Flat Earth Society, but within itself, within its domain of knowledge, it has internal consistency created through ontology, its objects and the relationships between those objects. A lot of ontological questions move into really, really deep terrain and emotionally volatile. So, you know, is there a God? Is war ever justifiable? But the key for us as doctoral candidates and those of us who are trying to help you is ontology has one clear big role in your PhD because ontology helps us to link the particular, the specific, and the universal or the generalized, right? So what this does for you is how does your individual project link to the wider domain of knowledge? How does your individual research project link with your discipline? So if you are answering the question I always ask of you all, what is your original contribution to knowledge? What is your original contribution to knowledge? That is an ontological question because it's stating to you, right, okay, you've got your specific little project, brilliant, that's great, but to determine what its originality is, you have to link it with the wider objects of knowledge and the wider domains of knowledge that may be your discipline. So my original contribution to knowledge is, is you expressing your ontology. We're winning, we're getting forward, let's go. So if it helps, Let's crunch this down once more and slightly define it in a different way. Ontology really has four parts to it, depending on your discipline. So a lot of guys and gals study ontological commitments. So what we believe or what other people believe, and that is often the project in the humanities. We may study that which is, that which exists in the world, 
and often we enact those studies in the harder sciences and in engineering. We may study the relationship between objects, between things that exist in society, and often those relationship-based studies come from, no surprise there, the social sciences. But what all of us do, whatever our disciplines, is often called meta ontology. Meta ontology probing what the discipline of ontology should do, but most importantly, the methodology that is required to answer those questions. So this is where ontology leads to our third wise monkey that we're going to do next week, which is methodology. So, okay, we've got the objects. How do we study them? That's methodology. So this is really big stuff. I understand that. But think about ontology as a way to prove the existence of an object in the world. And therefore, we have to have a sense of understanding of how we prove that. What is our verification? What is the weight of the data set that we are deploying? And of course, that evidential base is very different depending on the question we're asking. So the question, how do we prove the existence of God, requires a very different series of strategies compared to what are the causes of the Second World War, or indeed, what is the age of a fossil? All three require an ontology, but a very different methodology to understand how to actually create that verification, that answer. So each of these inquiries has a very different set of objects, a very different set of relationships around those objects and how we verify their meaning and render them meaningful. Okay, so ontology is where we question the very nature of reality, that which is true, that which is verifiable, that which is important. And this may appear incredibly abstract, and often ontology sort of does, really abstract, really outside of metaphysics. You go, do I need this stuff? Why do I need this stuff? Why do I need this word? But let me justify it to you if I can. What ontology does is it provides the foundation for knowledge. It ensures that the foundation for your project is strong because we have to think through the knowledge systems and the truths that we're going to deploy in your research. So I've often described ontology as the foundation of research. It's like the concrete foundations of your house to be honest with you. You need concrete foundations in your house so the house doesn't fall down, okay? But once you've got the house, you don't actually see the concrete, you don't see the foundations, and indeed ontology is the same. You do that hard work at the start, get the solid ontological foundations in place, and then you can build your research. And this is, by the way, why, and I'm just about to give a trick at all my PhD students around the world never knew this is why I did this, but in my first meeting with my new PhD students, I get them to ask two questions. What am I talking about? What is my original contribution to knowledge? What am I talking about? And right at the start, what am I not talking about? So what is not part of this project? What am I talking about? What am I not talking about? That crucial first division, that is an ontological decision. So ontology really matters here because you've got to have a sense of what you are investigating and what you are not investigating and creating limitations around your research. The limitations come from ontology. So if we're asking questions about the meaning of life, that's great, but you've got to have a meaning of death. What does death mean so that we can understand what life means? actually means. Similarly, if we're probing blackness, if we're probing racism, we need an understanding of whiteness. We need an understanding of domination. The legendary Zizek, bless him, stated that beyond the fiction of reality, there is a reality of the fiction. Wow. So that's ontology. We're placing objects within language, and the moment we place them in language, we're placing them in categories, and we're creating relationships around them. And indeed, fiction and reality are two such categories. So sometimes ontology is a form of taxonomy. We see that particularly high to all our computer scientists and our information scientists. So when we're doing this work, it also is a taxonomy. But in most disciplines, it's not that rigid. It's not that clear. 
So as you progress through your research this week, why don't you just for a couple of moments take a break from the lab, take a break from the library and take a breath and ask yourself, how do I know what I know? What is real to me? What are the objects in my research and what are the relationships between them? That's your ontology. And every now and again in a PhD program, it's not a bad idea to summon just a little bit of Yoda. Yes, I know Luke Skywalker did save the universe from itself, but always remember that Luke Skywalker's great and amazing adventures were based on the ontological instructions of a Yoda. May we all go forward in our research with a Yoda in our mind. So I wish you love, light and peace from the second of our three wise monkeys. And yes, tea out. I still don't trust Toblerone. It's a well dodgy chocolate.